This is Mars, and by 2029, Elon Musk predicts that the first humans would finally walk on the surface of the planet. But as we all know, making Mars habitable for human life is no easy feat, and it might be that we may not succeed at all. Let me explain to you why in this video. First, in order to make this happen, we need to terraform the planet, a process of artificially changing the climate and surface of Mars to make it more Earth-like. And how does Elon plan to pull this off? Well, his answer is simple, through nuclear missiles. World of Statistics tweeted this on September 19th, 2021. While Mars temperatures at the equator can reach as high as a balmy 35 degrees Celsius, in the summer at midday, the average temperature on the surface is negative 63 degrees Celsius and can reach as low as negative 143 degrees Celsius during winter in the polar regions. To which Elon Chigley replied, need a little warming up. SpaceX plans on creating smaller artificial suns that would warm the planet and produce an Earth-like atmosphere. Elon proposes blasting both poles with pulsating nuclear weapons. And it's no surprise that Elon is labeled as a supervillain by Stephen Colbert for his means of making Mars habitable in the fastest way possible. A lot of people weren't happy with the tech billionaire's methods. Mark Hemingway, a senior writer for the Weekly Standard, sarcastically responded by tweeting, shouldn't we try to blow up the moon first? But Runag Jane asked what most people who have no scientific or technological background are thinking in a tweet. Stupid question, but at Elon Musk's plan of nuking Mars to make it warmer and more habitable, what would happen to all that radiation? Well, Elon said the radiation wouldn't be an issue since the explosion would be in space over the poles, and not on the planet itself. On paper, it may sound like all is well, but is that really the case? Pap Dr. Veronica Sliwa, a leading scientist, begs to differ. This is a concept, Veronica Sliwa said in response. Unfortunately, it must also be said that it's not very realistic, for quite a prosaic reason, because, as estimated by scientists, dealing with Mars, the dioxide in Mars's polar caps is simply not enough. Even if 100% of it was released, the Martian atmosphere would be many times less thick than Earth's, and temperatures wouldn't rise sufficiently. In other words, Musk's vision of making humanity a multi-planetary species may not be realized just yet, or at least not within the estimated time frame. While nuking Mars may be the quickest way to warm up the planet, there's another method, a safer and more feasible alternative. However, the only catch is that it's going to take decades before we see any results. The researchers from Harvard University, NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, and the University of Edinburgh have a more targeted approach. They suggest there may be regions of the planet that are made with a habitable material called silica aerogel. It would mimic Earth's atmosphere's greenhouse effect. Robin Wordsworth, an assistant professor at SEAS, said that this regional approach to making Mars habitable is much more achievable than global atomic modification. Although this takes on a much slower pace compared to Elon's way of using thermonuclear weapons, it's clear that the scientists support this method a lot more. As of now, it's still undecided how these top leading organizations will go about terraforming Mars. What is certain though, is that it'll take a lot of effort, time, and planning to make this happen. Nevertheless, the idea of humans living on Mars in the future is no longer a figment of our imagination, but a real possibility. But the real question that everyone's thinking is, is it worth the trouble? Making Mars a habitable planet may cost over 15 trillion dollars before the cost of rockets. And more importantly, people want to know, is it logical to terraform another planet when we haven't even taken care of our own? But before we take a look at why the world's leaders are so keen on making humanity interplanetary, let's go over the ways how a trip to Mars could kill you even before you set foot on the red planet. 1. The rocket could blow up before it leaves Earth. While this may sound dark, this has already happened before. And as the famous saying goes, history tends to repeat itself. Let's go back to the years 1981 to 2011 when NASA launched its space shuttle program. 
Out of the 833 passengers, 14 people passed away in the explosions. These were high-profile accidents, the Challenger and Columbia. The fatality rate of an explosion is 1.6%, which is higher than climbing Mount Everest. Of course, Elon would do everything he can to make sure his rockets are up to par and exceed safety expectations. And while he's using newer technologies, it doesn't change the fact that his rockets remain untested. Musk's smaller Falcon 9 rockets have either exploded while still on their launch pad or mid-flight, and since then, engineers and scientists have been improving the rockets to prevent it from happening again. But still, it's unlikely the risk will be zero. 2. You could die from space radiation. Once you're out of Earth's atmosphere, you're exposed to high levels of ionizing radiation. These are three types of radiation you're exposed to in space, solar particle events, galactic cosmic rays, and Van Allen belts, all of which can be pretty harmful to your health if you're not properly protected. During a solar particle event, the sun releases a stream of charged particles that travel at high speeds. If you're caught in the path of one of these, it could cause some serious health problems. Then there are galactic cosmic rays, which are high energy particles that come from the outside of our solar system. These particles can penetrate deep into your body and cause damage to your cells. Lastly, there's Van Allen belts, which are areas of high radiation surrounding Earth. These belts are made up of charged particles that are trapped by Earth's magnetic field. While you're protected from these harmful rays while on Earth, you're not so lucky once you leave our atmosphere. That's why astronauts on the International Space Station wear suits to help deflect some of the radiation away from their bodies. But even with these suits, they're still exposed to high levels of radiation. And if you do survive a trip and land on Mars, the radiation problem still continues. The planet does not have an ozone layer and has a weak magnetic field. In other words, for you to live a long life on Mars, you'll have no other choice but to stay indoors most of your stay there to keep yourself protected from the cosmic rays and UV rays. Number 3. You could literally crash while trying to land on Mars. I want you to imagine this. After traveling for six months, trapped with the same people and seeing the same faces, you can finally see Mars up close. But you suddenly remembered what Chris McKay, a senior scientist at NASA Ames Research Center, had said. The old cliche about flying applies to spaceflight too. It's long stretches of tedium punctuated by a few moments of terror. Take off and landing. And then you start sweating. Did you just travel for six months just to die on landing? Well, maybe. The spaceship is traveling at 62,000 miles per hour. And the fact that the red planet's atmosphere is way thinner than Earth's doesn't help this, as there is less friction to slow down the spaceship. NASA is already having a difficult time landing small robots on Mars' surface. So imagine how much of a struggle it would be to land an entire rocket ship on Mars, safely. The best thing you could do is buckle up. And finally, let's say you do land on Mars and you make it alive. But there's still a chance you could die from leakage. The first hundred humans to land on Mars should be prepared. There won't be any resources of food, water, and oxygen. However, the real danger is from accidents. It's likely that the spacesuit could tear, which means you'll lose air. Mars is famous for its generous amount of dust and dirt. The moment it clogs the seal and potentially causes a leak, death is inevitable. Elon Musk still doesn't have an answer about how we can protect these accidents from happening, as he still has other things to take care of. He isn't denying that there will be sacrifices on the first journey to Mars. In an interview he said, it's dangerous, it's uncomfortable, it's a long journey, you might not come back alive, but it's a glorious adventure and it'll be an amazing experience. You might die, and you probably won't have good food and all these things," Elon added. Knowing all these risks, there are still millions of people who are keen on being the first to set foot on Mars. With the dangers that await, Elon is only taking volunteers to the Red Planet. But it isn't all about mankind's longing for exploration and adventure. It's also about saving the human race from extinction. History shows that it's possible for life on Earth to come to an end. The dinosaurs were wiped out by a meteor, and we might suffer the same fate. Placing humans on two planets ensures that humanity will continue to survive and evolve for thousands or millions of years from now. Clearly Elon isn't doing this just to fulfill his lifelong dream. But ultimately, the goal is to preserve mankind. 
Whether this exploration may lead to our doom or start of a new era, only time will tell. But what about you? Are you willing to take the risk and be one of the first humans to land on Mars for the sake of humanity? But before you answer, I'll leave you with a quote from Alexander Kumar, a British doctor. Only by pushing mankind to its limits, to the bottoms of the ocean and into space, will we make discoveries in science and technology that can be adapted to improve life on Earth. If the video helped you gain a new perspective on mankind's exploration of space, then please like and subscribe to support the channel. We're looking forward to reading your answers in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.